Okay, somebody to remind me. Okay, so the maximum number of zeros is four because the degree is four. Something that we haven't talked about that we're going to need for the next section is what is the power function? What's the power function in this instance? It's x to the fourth, yeah. It's one x to the fourth. It's the highest powered term that appears, positive or negative. Now remember, because this is an even degree polynomial, that means that it is top top, because it's going the same direction, leading coefficient is one, because it's an even degree polynomial, and uh, has a maximum of, uh, of, of four zeros, more or less. Now, list all the possible rational zeros. There are a lot of them, so therefore I listed them for you. The front of the bus is a one, and the back of the bus is a 252. And if I look at the divisors, the good news is I'm dividing by plus or minus one. So it's, it's the, the uh, factors of the back divided by the factors of the front. And so I'm just going to be dividing the factors by plus or minus one. And if I'm dividing that thing by plus or minus one, it's just the list of the factors of the back. But look how many there are. One, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, twelve, fourteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight, thirty-six, forty-two, sixty-three, eighty-four, one twenty-six, two fifty-two. Now the good news is this. I only need to find one to begin peeling the onion away of, of this particular problem. And if I find two, I'm home free. And you're going to say, why? Because if I have one zero, I can reduce a fourth degree polynomial down to a third degree polynomial. If I can find two zeros, then I can take the second zero, take the third degree polynomial, reduce it down to a quadratic. Once it's down to a quadratic, I can use the quadratic formula on it. So that's the process. And since the front is plus or minus one, this is your list. And then, of course, what do we do? We use our calculators to narrow the list. So uh, y equals and clear that out of there, uh, x to the fourth plus 3x to the three minus 19x squared plus 27x minus 252. And check to see that I've typed it in correctly. And then I don't know what I've been doing with my calculator uh, in the meantime, or what it's been doing without me. Kept, we've been apart for a week, so who knows? Gremlins always abound. Uh, so I'm just going to do a zoom standard or zoom six. That's between minus 10 and 10, and see how many zeros pop up. Two. I don't have the whole graph. I don't particularly care whether I do. I just need the zeros. I can get the whole graph if I need to. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like negative seven. Is negative seven in my list? Yeah. And then one, two, three, four, positive four. Is positive four in my list? Yep. So trace, type in negative seven. It's a zero. Type in four. It's a zero. So those I have two zeros, negative seven and four. The nice thing about this particular process is that it's one of those things you can use for other purposes. If you had to evaluate a function over and over again, you could put that function into y1, and then all you'd have to do, bring the graph up, make sure your x values are in the window. So in other words, I could set my window to incorporate the values I need to calculate. As long as the x value is in the window, so either between minus 10 and 10, minus 100 to 100, 
minus 5,000 to 5,000. You don't care what the graph looks like as long as the x values are in the interval. Then you could go ahead and do that. You could bring the graph up, trace, put in x, get out y, put in x, get out y. The y values don't have to be there, but the x values do. So it makes it a very quick way to evaluate something where you ha uh, that you're dealing with. So we know we have two zeros. Uh, negative 7 is a 0 and 4 is a 0. Now we want to find the other zeros. Now we do that using synthetic division. So it doesn't matter whether you start with negative 7 or 4, whatever you want to do. I'm going to start with negative 7. Why? Because that's what I wrote down first. So that says I know that negative 7 is a 0, so I'm going to divide it into my polynomial which is 1x to the fourth, 3x cubed, negative 19x squared, plus 27x, minus 252. Because it's a zero, I know my remainder will be zero. Bring down the one, negative seven times one is negative seven, and add, negative seven times negative four is positive 28, and add, negative 7, that's not true, is it? 19 and 19 is not 28. Uh, 8, uh, I don't know, my Nine. little puny brain. Uh, it, what is it? 9. 9, so it's a plus 9. Cheat. Uh, and negative 7 times plus 9 is minus 63 and add, it's going to make my life miserable today because uh, my mind is not working. So this is minus 27, is minus 36. And if all goes well, 7 times 36 should be? 252. Times 7, 252. And add, I get 0. So that I know what one of the zeros is, it's, set, it's negative 7. Now I'm going to divide out the other one. Now this is now a cubic. Why? Because I've gotten rid of one term. This is the constant x, x squared, x cubed. That's the cubic. So what I've said is that I know that f of x is now x plus 7, because if I know the zeros then I know the factors, times x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x minus 36. Now, that's what I mean about peeling away the onion because the next step when I do the division is I'm going to factor out the next factor and what's going to be here is a quadratic. So the next factor we know, the next zero is 4, so the factor I'm going to take out is x minus 4 because x plus 4, x equal 4 is a zero, x minus 4 is a factor. So I'm going to divide this guy by 4. Now the remainder should be zero and what I should have is a quadratic. So bring down the 1, 4 times 1, oh isn't this cute? is 4 and add, 4 times 0 is 0 and add, 4 times 9 is 36 and add, that's 0. This is the remainder, constant, coefficient of x, coefficient of x squared, so this is going to be x squared plus 9. So that's the quadratic. Now why did I like this so much? Because x squared plus 9, if I set that equal to 0, I don't have to use a quadratic formula on it. What could I use on it? Now, I can't factor it. begins with an S. Square root property, right? So that if I know x squared plus 9 equals 0, this says that x squared equals minus 9 take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or minus, 
4x is equal to plus or minus 3i. So how many zeros does it have? Well, my zeros are negative 7, positive 4, 3i, minus 3i. And if I know the zeros, then I know the begins with an F. Factors. factors. Because if I know the factors, then I know the zeros. So then it says write in factored form. Well, here are my zeros. So I know that the factors would be x plus 7, x minus 4, x minus 3i, x plus 3i, and what's the leading coefficient? In this instance, go back to the top. What's the leading coefficient? Leading coefficient, not leading term. Leading coefficient of x to the fourth is 1. So that I can say f of x equals that guy in factored form. It peels like an onion, one layer at a time. I like it, but I don't have to use a quadratic formula. But if all else fails, you could use the quadratic formula. Once you got it down to a quadratic, you can just shove that thing in a quadratic formula, whether it factors or not, and it works every single time.